by the way, good morning to my, our social media family. We'd like to see you in the place one day, too. Come on out and worship. Come on out, yeah. You know, the Lord said, do not forsake the assembly. Huh? He said it, I didn't say it. Don't get bad at me, I didn't say that. He wants us to come together because he knows what happens when we touch each other. Whoa. Let's not continue to take advantage of the virtual oh, 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 thing that we're doing. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what a mighty, mighty God we serve. Oh, if we really knew who yeah. he was, yeah. <laughs> we think about some other things that we do. Years ago, when that pandemic thing started, they started saying the non-essential workers. Huh? What happened to the church? Did the church become non-essential? Y'all know what? I, I don't even know why I came up with this, but I do know. Because God doesn't want us to be like this here. The church is empty. A few people. Because we're not understanding why we're supposed to be here. It's not it's not our choice. See, the very one that allowed you to breathe, we're forsaking him. What if he forsakes you? What would happen? We make these decisions and choices about what we're doing with our lives and we say, you know, God, you're non-essential. You didn't say it with your voice, but it's your actions. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I went this direction. Lord have mercy, I wasn't thinking about this. But God is speaking to the church. Not the building, ha uh ha, -huh. not the building. He's speaking to the church. Because he is essential. He is essential. He is first and foremost. He should be the first thing that you even think about. My Lord. My Lord. Every morning. My Lord. Every day. Yeah. My goodness, what are we doing, people? Oh, people of God. Those that don't know him, okay? We have to reach out to them. But the people of God. Think about it every time that we're to be coming together. To corporately, corporately people, it's a corporate thing. Don't leave him out. He doesn't want to be left out. Think about his grace, his mercy. We have all kinds of excuses why we're not here. But his grace and his mercy, his grace and it's his grace and his mercy. My brothers and sisters, it's his grace and his mercy. You did not get up on your own. <laughs> He's blessing us. And we say, oh God, you're such a blessing to us. We love the Lord. He blesses us. We love, love, love God. We just love him so much. And he loves you. But there are expectations that he has, just like we have expectations of him. You expect him to bless you. Oh, God got me. I hear it all the time. God got me. God got me. Do you got him? That might not be grammatically correct, but do you got him? Come on, people. How do we let the world talk us into the church becoming non-essential? What is the reason that we have allowed the church, the, the world, to talk to us into being non-essential? People were at Walmart when we were shut down. And then when we opened back up, they still at Walmart, but they had to come back to his house. 
not denying you. We need your help. Grace us that the eyes of our understanding will open and we will begin to see as we ought to see. That we will begin to see that you are the supreme God. You are the supremacy. There is none like you, Lord God, in all the earth. Touch the hearts, Lord God, of those who say they know you, of those who say they love you. Open their eyes and help them to begin to see how important you are. That if you do not breathe or allow them to breathe, I mean, you ain't getting up. If God don't allow you to breathe, you're not getting up. Take them for granted. You gotta stop. This is serious. People are dying like never before. Oh God, open our eyes, open our eyes, open our eyes. Oh Lord God, open our eyes, open our eyes. Whatever the message is today, open our eyes, Lord God. Open our hearts. Help us to have eyes that see, ears that hear, and a perfect to hear. And open to receive Help. you, Lord God, because you are the only one that this is about. Help. You created us for the purpose of worshiping and hanging out with you in the cool of the day. And we have walked away from you. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord God. And we thank you as you run the service. You do what you want to do, Lord God. Because you're God. And we just praise you and honor you. Oh, yes. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. So much because your loving kindness never ceases. Your mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his excellent works. Praise him for his mighty acts. Let everything. Come on, y'all. Let everything that has breath. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. Did you come to praise him this morning? Hallelujah. He's been good. He's worthy of it. There is none who deserves it but you, Lord. And we give it to you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, oh God. Hallelujah. So this song just says, you've been good to me. Hallelujah. Can anybody else declare that this morning? That you've been good to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I can't speak for you. But I know that he's been good. And they can't look, mm -hmm. he's been good. He's been mighty good. He's been so good. Hallelujah. Not that I deserve it. Not that we deserve it. But it doesn't stop him from being good. Because that's just who you are. Hallelujah. Our good good father. And we bless your holy name.
Somebody told me that they had a cancer diagnosis. They're going to have surgery next week. This week alone, somebody told me that they have a feeling of hopelessness. This week alone. This week alone, somebody had a stroke. They already suffered one stroke, then they had another stroke. This week alone, somebody told me that they had to go to counseling because of prolonged grief. This week alone, somebody told me that they had financial issues that they're trying to recover from. This week alone, somebody told me they lost a job. This week alone, I know somebody who had a car accident. This week alone, I know someone who had erratic heartbeat. Thought we're gonna have to rush them to uh, emergency or call the paramedics to come. This week alone, somebody told me that they had marriage issues. This week alone, somebody told me that they have a relative that's sick. This week alone, somebody told me that they're just tired. They're just tired of what they're going through. This week alone, all those things, I heard all those things. Yes, sir. But I want you to know that none of those things are beyond God's reach. Amen. None of those things are beyond God's reach. None of those things are beyond God's ability. Mm. God has done something. God has given us an assurance. Uh, the assurance is something that's promised. It's something that's guaranteed. It's a certainty. It's something that we can have confidence in. My Lord. And when an assurance is given to somebody, by somebody, who we know that has integrity, somebody who's honest, somebody who's trustworthy, we accept that assurance more so than we accept the assurance of somebody that we don't really know that we can trust. Oh, oh. Well, I want you to know that God has given us an assurance in his word. Amen. He's given us a word, assurance that we can believe in, that we can trust in. Amen. We put all our confidence in for example, God says in Romans 8.31, if he's for us, then he who can be against us. Who? That's an assurance. Uh -huh. God says in his word that he gave up his only begotten son so that you and I can be saved. That's an assurance. God said in his word that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. That's an assurance. God says in his word that we can be healed. By his stripes, we can be healed. That's an assurance. God says in his word for us to trust and believe in him. That's an assurance. Amen? So regardless of whatever we may be going through in life, we have assurance. Back when I was in my church, when I was growing up, they used to sing a song, Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. You remember that, right? Blessed. It's a blessed assurance. It's a blessed that we guarantee that God's promise, because he's not a man that he can lie, neither a son of man that he should repent, but if God said it, God's going to do it. We have an assurance. We have a guest speaker today, my good friend, Pastor Gary Joy. Yes, yes. And so we are happy to have him and his family with us today, and he's going to come and expound on that word. 
God has given us an assurance, assurance for our lives. Amen. An assurance that we can trust in. Amen. I love you. Thank you for your friendship. Yeah. Thank you for always checking on me, being concerned about me. Yes, Thank you for being my confidant. Thank you for being my great supporter. Yeah. Thank you for being my great fan. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. <laughs> if you would, let's welcome Pastor Jordan to come. Oh, Everybody's not on YouTube, but one thing about Pastor Jordan, if my family is here, will tell you, if you got a phone, I will send you a message. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you cannot get around God. Amen. I tell them, you like T-Rex, uh -huh. your arms are too short to box with God. Yes, sir. Yes, Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Tell the story. God tell is us. good. Amen. Amen. Yep. Uh, I asked Pastor also to allow me this morning, amen, before I get into the message, to thank the Lord, mm. because uh, Spiritual Victory is also celebrating 18 years, it's our anniversary, 18 years of ministry, amen, come on, somebody give God a hand for you. <laughs> Only God knew that one day I would be pastoring for 18 years. I'm like, oh no, not me. Not me. Can't happen. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. Hallelujah. Okay. But I bring you greetings this morning. Thank you. From our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. I bring you greetings this morning from uh, my pastor and my good friend and my big brother, Apostle James Artis Winans Jones, who's also uh, a good friend of Pastor Turner's, Amen. and he sends his greetings to and blessings to all of Amen. you. To my beautiful wife, uh -huh. and to my daughter, Minister Sledge, uh -huh. and to my grandchildren, uh -huh. and Auntie Margie, Hello. and to all of my friends, all Hello. of my brothers and sisters Amen. in the Lord. Amen. I may not know you by name, uh -huh. but I know you. Amen? Right. Right. Because God knows you. Right. Hallelujah. Right. I am excited to be here this morning. Right. Amen. And first, of all, I don't want to forget the angel of this house. My brother, uh -huh. my friend, uh -huh. my partner, Pastor Gary Turner. Pastor Amen. Turner. Amen. We God bless you, Pastor you. Turner. Yeah. Amen. I love this brother dearly. Uh -huh. Amen. God connected us a long time ago. Long and time. I waited for all my partners to retire so I had somebody to play golf with. <laughs> Amen. So he became one of my golf partners Amen. as well. Amen. Brother Greg is here today. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. And I was Amen. thinking about y'all. And you know, I was here. Back in April, uh, just a few days before I had knee replacement surgery, right. so I'm moving pretty good for That's right. oh, you are, with a you are. new knee. And, and we were celebrating your anniversary then, and the Lord had given me a message back then, which I'm going to preach today because he gave me another, another message he told me to preach then. And that message is for all of us, with all of us celebrating 18 years, and you guys celebrating 15 years, and people who are just going through different stuff. As Pastor said, I thought he was going to go ahead and preach my message. I was going to sit there and cross my phone. Go ahead on. And, and to know that there are some assurances from God for your life. For my life. Amen. I just came to testify about that today, okay. about okay. the assurances okay. that God has uh -huh. for your life. Okay. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all pray for me today. Amen. I need to, I, I try not to get too too ahead of myself. I get too excited sometimes. I know you're happy. And, I know uh, you're happy. And I get, uh, I get all wound up. Amen. But I'm going to ask you to stand with me okay. this morning for the reading of the Lord's Word. Let us go to Romans, the 8th chapter. 
Amen. And Pastor's already given you some of these verses, beginning at verse 31. And I'm only going to read down through uh, verse 35, but the lesson goes through 39. Amen. To the end of the chapter. Hallelujah. If you have Romans, the 8th chapter, beginning at verse 31, just acknowledge by saying amen. And those of you who are streaming in with us, get your swords out also, amen, and read along with us as we read the word of God this morning, as the Lord speaks to our hearts today, amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 If you have it, just acknowledge by saying amen. Amen. And that means so be it, amen. So be it. And the word of God reads here in Romans 8, 31, beginning at verse 31, says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, he, spared, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us. Hallelujah. All he delivered us up for us all. Uh, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Everyone say all things. All things. See, that's an assurance from God. Uh, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who, still, who also maketh intercession for us. Hallelujah. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall? Shall tribulation uh -huh. or distress uh -huh. or persecution what? or famine or nakedness what? What? or peril mm. or sword? Mm. Let me read on. For as it is written, oh. for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Yes, yes. We are counted as sheep yes. for the slaughter. Holy Nay, in all things we are more than oh. conquerors oh. through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor, any, nor principalities, nor powers, Testify. nor things present, nor things to come. Testify. Nor height, nor depth, Testify. nor any creature shall be able Testify. to separate us from the love Testify. of God, Hallelujah. which is in Christ Jesus, Hallelujah. our Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. for Hallelujah. the word of God is a living word. It is alive, amen. And may that word of God dwell richly in you and live through you. Uh, before you take your seat, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, amen. God is for you. Amen. amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor gave a list of things of what he heard over the past week. And that's just in passing. In passing. That's just in passing. Yeah. All of these folks going through all of these things. And sometimes we allow these things to overtake us. I tell people all the time, you got to learn how to surf. Oh, because uh, when you're surfing and you're up on that wave, see the wave, if you fight the wave, the wave will pull you down. But if you will ride the wave, come on somebody, the wave will push you to your destiny. To your destiny. Hallelujah. That's a whole other message right there. But y'all hold on to that nugget. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Yeah, glory to God. See, this glorious message of Romans is that God assures us, delivers, in other words, freedom from struggling and suffering, here's the key, through Christ. Jesus said, there's going, you're going to have some trouble in your life. You're going to go through things. But I want to let you know, hallelujah, that God said some 27 years ago when I was still a bad boy, and I wasn't really trying to listen to God, but God said, if you want to get through this situation and every situation, I have an assurance for you. That's right. And so he gave me 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Which says, but thanks be unto God and give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, God assured me right then. He said, bad boy, if you want to get through everything in your life, all the stuff that you've been going through, you're going to first have to listen to me. Whoa. You're going to have to walk in what, Joshua? Whoa. 
Obedience. Say it out loud. Obedience. obedience. <laughs> See, he didn't know I was going to do that to him. <laughs> but you must walk in obedience. And if you will do that thing, I, I assure you, you will have the victory over every situation in your life. Now, that particular scripture is the foundational scripture of, of the ministry of spiritual victory through Christ's ministry. But first and foremost, it is the foundational scripture for my life. God said you're going to be victorious. And then in 2 Corinthians 2.14, God said you will also be triumphant in Christ. So in him and through him, we are victorious and triumphant. That is an assurance from God. In him, okay. Hallelujah. And see this firm assurance. Mm -hmm. oh, it's based on God's care for each one of us. Oh, it's reassuring us to know that even when we feel completely abandoned, as one person said, I feel like I'm so alone. I, I don't feel like anything's, I, I don't have anything to hold on to. The devil is a liar. That's right. I want you to know that the Holy Ghost is still with you. Even when we feel like we're out on a desert by ourselves, even when we feel like we're out on a limb all by ourselves, and somebody behind us is sawing the limb off and <laughs> behind us, God is still with us. Amen. through Christ, Paul also tells us that there is a distinction of the, of the spiritual life. Y'all better pray for me because I'm getting excited. Hallelujah. We have a distinction of the spirit life. We've been blessed by God to have that. Hallelujah. What a word. So what does this word distinction mean, Pastor Jordan? It, it means that as the children of God, that Thing, that excellence is a distinctive plan of salvation that guarantees absolute eternal security to everyone who is saved thereby. Absolutely. Absolutely. Romans 8 and 30 says, There, moreover, whom he did predestinate, oh. them he also called. Oh. And whom he called, them he oh. also justified. And whom he justified, oh. them he also Glorified. <laughs> he glorified us. Boy, I wish I could sing. Blessed assurance. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh -huh. Jesus is mine. Uh -huh. I'll leave that to the Lord. Okay, okay, okay. But I do remember the song. <laughs> oh, what up? <laughs> yeah, timeless. Timeless. Ooh, God timeless. is good. Song, my Lord. So, brothers and sisters, let us look into these verses this morning. Y'all okay. pray for me as I go. And allow the Lord to teach us. That if we are truly saved, if we are in, we are indeed mm -hmm. secure, you have assurances of it. See, State Farm now say that they got the best insurance plan of all. But I want you to know God is the best insurance I've ever had. He's not only my insurance, he's my assurance. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, that word. So this message today, which Pastor has already given you, is... The assurances, the assurances of God, of God. for your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. The 
No matter what you're going through. You're looking at a man that's had a heart attack, three major strokes, cancer, hepatitis, thrown off of motorcycles, rolled over two cars, and thrown out of one. Was paralyzed and couldn't walk. But here I stand. Because why? I have the victory through Christ Jesus. He assured me of that. Well, you know God always give you if you. If you if will, you. I guarantee I will. If you will. Amen. <laughs> Let us have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, dear God, for the opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for just being able to be here this morning, to stand here this morning before your people, to glorify your holy name, Lord, and to thank you for just allowing me to pastor for 18 years. Oh, glory. Only you can do such a thing. And Father God, I pray now you would bless the hearing of these, your people. Hallelujah. Protect that hearing, Lord, that this word of God would saturate their lives, would take deep root in their hearts and in their souls and in their spirits. And then that word of God would begin to blossom in their lives, Lord God. Hallelujah. As I heard Sister Terry say that we are light Hallelujah. in this dark world. Amen. So, Father God, I pray now that you that you would hide me behind the cross, Lord God. Use me to your glory that these your people would be edified and you would be glorified in all that is said and done. In Jesus' holy name, Jesus. the saints of God said, Amen. Amen. I can always count on my brother P over there. Yeah. He's worthy. But He's worthy yes, to be praised. So we're talking about the assurances. The assurances of God. Now, you know, people like to assure you of a whole lot of things. Oh, yeah. People make a whole lot of promises to us oh, all, of all of the time. I never forget when I first started this journey in pastor, and I had a bunch of people made a whole lot of promises. Uh -oh. All of those seats are empty today. Oh, <laughs> oh pastor, you can always count on me. Ooh. I'm going to always be there for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to always be there. You ain't never got to worry about me. Okay. <laughs> and then one day... First lady said, y'all know y'all need to stop saying it then because he's going to hold you accountable. He's going to bring it back up to you. And I, and I did. Amen. So, do you remember when? Do you remember when? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. See, I want you to understand that God himself is the believer's assurance. Amen. He's not just your insurance. He's your assurance. Amen. Amen. God himself is active for the believer. He has done everything that is necessary everything. and even more. So if God be for us, who can be against us? Doesn't matter what people say. I said them Nims always got something to say. Them cousins Nims and other Nims, friends yes, sir. Nims. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even some pastor Nims. Hey. I go and tell the truth. I always got something to say. Something. But God. But God. I remember one time when I was going through some of my troubles, uh -huh. my bad boy stuff. And uh -huh. I had to go see a person, and they sat down. Y'all know the little little uh, booklets? They probably don't do them anymore. They used to have the little handout, the little little red and yellow books with the smiley face on them. Yeah. And the first thing she did was threw that in front of me. <laughs> you need that right there. Mm -hmm. I said, what's that? This, this is going to help you. And she was growling at me. You, you need Jesus in your life to straighten you out. I said, well, if Jesus act like that, I don't think I want to do that. I don't want none of that. I said, because as far as I know, Jesus is not that way. Jesus is not angry when he came to me and said, even on the Damascus Road and slapped the hell out of me. Jesus was not angry. He said, you just need a good slapping. Because you got all that hell in you that I need to get out of you. So I'm going to slap the hell out of you. Paul wasn't the only one. <laughs> See, some of y'all, y'all didn't have to go through all of that. But some of us needed a good slapping. You know, the Bible says that Paul said he saw a flash of light. Yeah. You know, when somebody slapped you, what's the first thing you see? You see a flash of light. And you can't see nothing. Paul was like, Saul was like, yes, Lord, I know that's you. Because only Jesus can slap you like that. And slap you with love. With love. With love. <laughs> love. With love. Hallelujah. With love. Hallelujah. So if 
God be for us, who can be against us? Now, here is what I say about that. Assurance number one, when you look at the verses 31 to 33, it says you are secure by the labor of Christ. His mm labor. -hmm. And see, I want you to know that God's interest in us, God has an interest in us. According to what we have already learned in this chapter, we are partakers of a wonderful salvation experience that forever changes us and places us in the family of Almighty God. See, Paul's question reminds us of those things that, and, and, and it teaches us that God is infinitely interested in each one oh, yeah. of us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Individually. Individually. And collectively. And collectively. Well, see, his interest is seen in the fact that he loved us before time even began and he formulated a plan to bring us to himself. See, he knew us even before we were in our mother's womb, but, and yet God still loved us and made a way for us to be saved by his grace. My Lord, my Lord. Hold Romans 5 and 8 says, For God condemneth, commendeth his love toward us, that in while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, that's that assurance that God has secured you. We were not worth it. I heard the sister say, we were not worthy of any of that. Mm -hmm. But God. But God. <laughs> but God. See, that's proof that God is interested in each one of us. And notice the last part of verse 31. Verse, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Paul says, if. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always an if. <laughs> if is followed by something. That's right. But this if is not the if of possibility. It's not the questioning of whether or not God is for us. But it is stating the fact that God is. Y'all do remember this one. God is on our side. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God is for you. And therefore, no one can stand against God. No one can stand against us in God. Because he said, you're what? More than conquerors. More, more than conquerors. Hallelujah. See, he cares for you. He cares about you. Because he cares, you can take solace in the fact that Hallelujah, because you Thank and I are you. in Christ Jesus, we have, as I told you before, Thank we have the victory through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For holy. See, but it depends on where you stand. <laughs> are you in? Mm -hmm. You know, we like to say men and women of God. I like to say men and women in God. Oh. Oh. Therefore, if any man be what? In, in Christ. Christ. He didn't say of, he oh. said in. in. So you got to be all the way in. Oh, and let me just y'all. Give me nugget. Give me nugget. Somebody gonna get mad at me about give me this. Nugget. Give me nugget. Straddling the fence. Oh. It was a good song, wasn't it? Straddling the fence. We used to all sing it a long time. We sing that straddling the fence. Yeah, but you can't have one foot in hell and one foot in heaven. You can't be straddling. You either all the way in with Jesus or you all the way out with the devil. Yes, I said. Hallelujah. But the victory is in Christ Jesus. And understand this, he's going to give you the victory over every circumstance in your life, no matter what comes against you. So if God be for us, who can be against us? Because his interest in us secures us. But we also see that God has an investment in us. Because God loves a sinner so much, he gave his only begotten son to die on a ragged cross for our sins. And when Jesus died, it became sin for you and me. Amen. And he was judged in our place. Mm -hmm. He made the ultimate investment in you and me. My Lord. My Lord. How many of y'all have ever thought about God made an investment in you? Hallelujah. Too many times we make investments in the wrong things and the wrong people. Oh, yeah. The Bible says like putting your money in a bag with holes in it. Mm. <laughs> you got to know who and what you're investing in. Amen. Amen. This is a financial genius right here. Uh, you got to know about what you're investing in. Ain't that right, <laughs> Sometimes Amen. we invest in the wrong things mm. and the wrong people mm. at the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm. <laughs> mm. But understand that God made an investment in you Whoa. when you were not worthy of it. Whoa. He said that your righteousness is just filthy rags Whoa. before God. Whoa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I love what John 15, 13 says. Greater 
love have he have no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friend. See, you call people friends, but when you lay your life down for them, Jesus did that for you and for me. <laughs> so how many of you know that God has the greatest exchange program in existence? Oh, we got a major trade up. Amen. Our dirt for his riches and glory. <laughs> truly, 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 God is on our side. Now look at this. My love. The provisions of Jesus' uh -huh. life, for my life and your life, uh -huh. was God's investment into our salvation. Mm -hmm. Now see, when you and I received the finished work of the Lord Jesus' payment for our salvation, mm -hmm. we also received that dividend, dividend of that initial investment. My love. Oh, let me be, make it very personal for you. Okay. See, when I trusted God to save me, uh -huh. and Jesus uh, died on the cross for me. Uh, uh -huh. uh, his death became my death. Uh, uh -huh. His payment became my payment. My and at the very moment, the very all the books mm. were balanced. <laughs> and I was set free from the debt of sin that I owed to the Lord. What a word. Hallelujah. What a word. And now I am saved forever by his grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I am secured mm -hmm. by his investment in me. And if God be for us, mm, hallelujah. hallelujah. And then God has an intention for us. I like to call it intentionality. intentionality. See, I talk about the three T's a lot in my church. Uh, see, there's accountability, responsibility, and intentionality. It's called the three T's. <laughs> I can tell by y'all faces you would not expect that one. <laughs> See, all of us have, uh, all of us are accountable for the word of God in our lives. You have a responsibility to the word and for the word. But what is your intentionality? What are your intentions? But see, but I want you to know that God, I just want to throw that in, God has an intention also. God had made an intention for us when he gave up Jesus. See, now in verse 32, in the B part of the verse, Paul asks a question. He wants to know if God would pay this high price to save us. See, he did not plan to do something with us. Or, or, uh, what was God going to do? The answer, of course, is God always has a plan. Whether we know it or not, God has a plan right now for somebody in, in the, under the sound of my voice. Hallelujah. He has a plan for all of his children. Oh, yeah. His plan to take us all to be with him in his home in heaven. <laughs> Jesus went to prepare that place. Hallelujah. See, this was the prayer of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. This was the plan of God in yeah. John 17 and 24. Yeah. See, God did not save a single one of us to lose us along the way home. Uh, we are kept by the power of Almighty God. Amen. According to 1 Peter 1 and 5. See, we are destined to be with him in heaven someday. Glory to God. And in fact, the proof of that is seen in the fact that we are already considered to be there right now. If God be for you, who can be against you? I said, if God take me right now, he did way more than I ever thought he would do for me. See, he already, I love to pray Ephesians 3.20 over people. Because I want God to do something for you that you have no clue is coming. To do it exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think according to the power of God that works in your life. Because God got an assurance for your life. So I want God to do it so good and so big that you're just like, wow. When people ask you, how in the world did you get through that? All you can say God it was nothing I did. It was all God. Exceedingly, hallelujah. For me to be standing in this pulpit on the 19th day of November, yeah. 2020, 2023. Testify, testify. That is God. Yes, testify. Because <laughs> only God knew. Mm -hmm. I tried my best to run away. I know you did. Until I got on Damascus Road. <laughs> Y'all know what happened over there, right? So God had a 
had intentions for us. In Ephesians 2 and 6, he said, I've, and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That was God's intention for us. His intention is, is for each of us to bring us home to glory and nothing will stop that from taking place. Because if God be for you, <laughs> we also see the, the insistence concerning us. See, God is insistent about the things he wants to do for you. That's why he keeps assuring you that I will do this for you. Verse 33, another question is asked by Paul. He wants to know who has the right to say that we are guilty before God. It is God that justifies. See, the problem is this. A lost world sees those who claim to know Jesus. And as they view our lives, they see within us characteristics and traits from our old lives of sin. Or they see us and how we live, and, and then they wonder, how can we claim to be saved? <laughs> you still living like hell? You still in hell? My Lord. My Lord. See, you got to live saved. You got to live like you know Jesus. My Lord. My Lord. I used to be one of the worst of the worst. I used to jokingly tell everybody I was the devil's party boat captain. You know, I always, I set the menu, I knew everything. I had all the favors for you. <laughs> to kill, steal, and destroy your life. Yeah. And one day, Damascus Road. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and he said, how can you call a man your friend and poison his well at the same time? Because I was a cocaine dealer. He said, how can you Poison a man's well and call him your friend. And then look him straight in the eye and smile at him. Yeah. Yeah. That is not your friend. That's right. That person don't care nothing about you. All they want to do is take all your money and leave you for dead. So God said, well, I need to take away that one thing from you that's so important to you. Money. Money. Took every dime away and said, oh yeah, by the way, ain't no need looking for a job. Ain't nobody going to hire you. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm like, what? What? What you mean? What is going to tell my wife? Tell her just what I said. I said, do you know who I'm married to? I said, that's not going to go over well. That's right. He said, just tell her what I said. That's it didn't go over well either. That's right. I can't repeat the words. That's right. That's it didn't right. go over well. That's right. It didn't go over well. That's right. But thanks be unto God. That's right. She's still with me for the two years, yes, amen. Sir. Yes, sir. Somebody give God a hand. Hallelujah. See, when God has an intention for you, it doesn't matter what you think or what they think. It matters what he's saying. It's his intention for your life. That blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. But there are times when you and I do not like, do not act like we're saved. Mm -hmm. Our words, our actions, our attitude, that struggle, you know, that struggle between the, the, the flesh and the spirit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to always be watching your walk. Always. You got to watch your step. Always. Because if a lost person were watching our walk uh -oh. and they catch us in the middle of uh -oh. one of those, uh -oh. what I like to call flesh flare ups Ooh. or flash fires. Uh -oh. Busted. I know nobody had those. Busted. Busted. They just might conclude that we are just as wicked as they are. I told you about the lady who threw the book at me. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> but however, <laughs> what they cannot see mm. is the fact. Because I want you to know something. We all go through flash fires. What I call flesh flare-ups. We just have to we have to go repent and do like David did. Don't do it again. Yeah. This is what made David that That's after right. God's eye. Never did the same. David, when David was made aware of his sin, David never committed that sin again. Never. Amen. 
He went in the temple, got down on his knees, and he started begging, his face down on his face, and started begging God, don't kill me, Lord, please. Don't kill me. Amen. 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 Please don't take your spirit from me. Amen. When's the last time y'all prayed that prayer? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on your toes. <laughs> but see, you have to understand that one of these days, this flesh of ours will be completely and eternally changed. I remember being at a men's breakfast many years ago. Uh, I can't remember the bishop's name down in, I think it was Apostle now down in Douglasville. It was in Stone Mountain at a men's breakfast, uh, Way Truth for Life. And, uh, and I still use this for when Pastor said this. He said, your flesh will send you to hell, and it won't even show up. It'll get you into all kinds of trouble. But it's going to leave you for dead. It can't go with you. It'll get you in mess that you can't get out of. You'll be like, right. how did I get here? That's right. You had a flesh flare up. You had a flesh flare up. It'll send you to hell and it won't show up. And it won't show up. That's right. That's right. Thank God for change. Amen. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Thank God that we are still declared just by the power of God. Why? Because we're secure. Because of what God said that we are. See, y'all know this one real well. It's on the wall behind me. It says, for we are. We say that you might be. We are. We are. His. His. Come on, church. His. Workmanship. Come on, church. See, you God's craftsmanship, okay. you God's artistry, okay. you God's handiwork, okay. and God, and, and you are created in Christ Jesus unto what? Come on, good works, good works. Good works, my love. Which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. See, just like David said in Psalm 139, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hey. And see, when you God's handiwork, when you God's masterpiece, doesn't matter what anybody say about you. It don't even matter what you say about you. Uh, that's a good word. Because man. God said, yes. you my handiwork, yes. you my masterpiece, yes. you my craftsmanship. Yes. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. If God be for us, oh. come on, somebody. Come on. <laughs> come on. Hallelujah. That's right. See, God's truly on our side, church. Hallelujah. Y'all pray for me. Okay. Then there's assurance number two. You are secure, amen, mm. by the life of Jesus Christ. So verse 34 asks another very important question related to the matter of our security. There's another blessed assurance. Does anyone have the right, to, as I said before, to judge you and find, you, uh, uh, find them worthy of judgment? Oh. Can anyone point a finger oh. at a redeemed sinner and condemn them to hell? Paul oh. gives the answer to us. Paul oh. said the price was already paid. It was paid on the cross. So who has the right to condemn you? Who has the right to condemn us since Jesus is the one who died for us? My Lord. The answer is no one. Sorry. His death Sorry. on the cross took care of our sin debt. Sorry. Sin debt of every person Sorry. who will accept him as Lord and Savior. Sorry. And since he died and paid the price, Sorry. no one else has the right Sorry. or the power to judge you. Ooh, what a word. Mm -hmm. put up, put the power was also displayed at the tomb. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what happened. Mm -hmm. He stepped right out of it. Yeah. Third day, he rose from the dead. Oh. Tell your neighbor, he's still living. Yeah. He's still doing it. See, the fact is that he lives and gives us hope for our future. Mm -hmm. And those on that list that Pastor was talking about, I hope they heard this this morning. I hope they're with us this morning and hearing this, that God gives us hope for our future. Hallelujah. I gave you some of my stuff I've been through. Hallelujah. I had had so many seizures. The doctor said, Mr. Jordan, you've had over a hundred many strokes. I had three major ones, but he said, you've had over a hundred many strokes. And I had lesions on my brains from all of those times. My brain was stroking. And every time I stroked, I would black out. I remember driving down 285 and I called my wife and I said, Baby, if I don't call you back in five minutes, you call 911 tell them he's sitting on 285 right there by 78. She said, what's the matter? I said, I'm going out. And I pulled up on the side of the road, yeah. had my little seizure, did what I did, and then drove myself to Northside Hospital. 
When I got to Northside, they wanted to know how in the world did you get here? I said, I drove myself. My car said, I was at. He said, give me the keys. Oh. You're not leaving. Oh. Blood pressure was 215 over 108. Been there, done that. My Lord. My Lord. <laughs> I know what God can do. I'm a living witness standing before you. That's right. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. Why? Because of the position that Jesus holds on the throne. See, after his resurrection, Jesus ascended back to heaven and sat down at the right hand of God, according to Hebrews 10 and 12. And he continually makes intercession for us. Amen? For the redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is our advocate. He's our lawyer. He's the one who pleads our case every day in the court of law, in God's, God, in God's court. In the courtroom of heaven, Satan accuses the redeemed, and Jesus, the advocate, defends us before the Father, and the Father always dismisses the case. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be flaming right now. I'd be smoking like, like a charcoal. That's right. But God. But God. Oh, the advocate. And thank God that when the world and the flesh and the devil try to accuse us, before the throne of God, we have one who stands in, 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 in our place and defends us. See, all of these are blessed assurances of Almighty God. And what exhibit does he use for the, our defense? It's those marks of the cross in his body that prove that the price had already been paid, that the debt had already been taken care of. And that the believers are free. My Lord, free. What now look at this. Free. Free. Because he lives, no one has the right, I said before, to accuse you before the throne. No one has the right to judge you because you are redeemed. And so if God is for you and you are secure by the labor and the life of Christ, and God is truly on our side. And then the third thing, praise the Lord. Mm. Got, so, got so excited. Oh, <laughs> got out of my hand. Assurance number three is that you are secure uh -huh. also by the love of Christ. So I want you to know that Christ protects the believer from the most severest of circumstances. And the word circle means circles you. It, it, it encompasses you. It gets all around you. gets up in your business. You just want to mess up, mess with you. That's what the devil is always trying to do. Uh, trying to create a circumstance. Right. But I want you to know this sixth assurance of deliverance uh, is, is the most wonderful assurance imaginable. So who is it? Or what can we uh, can separate us from the love of God? Let me roll up my sleeve because I'm getting ready to fight a little bit. Uh, okay. See, too many people, even believers, uh, feel that God does not love them. Uh, I want you to understand something. The devil is a liar. Anything, remember this, anything the devil tells you Remember this, the devil is a liar and the truth ain't him. <laughs> so if he come to you with this and that and this and that, it's like, oh yeah, that's a lie. Because <laughs> God said, <laughs> I'm redeemed. Too many people, even believers, feel that God does not love them. Or that he just could not love them. Oh, they feel unworthy of his love. And, and for they come short and they're uh, too disobedient. And it fails just a little too often. Yeah. But God, but God. Yeah. see, it speaks of our special relationship Holy with our God. Holy I want you to know his love is enduring. Uh, his love is everlasting. Mm. Regardless of what we face and what we go through, nothing is able to come between us and the love of God. Nothing. See, the love, his love will endure uh, through anything and everything. Uh -huh. See, don't get caught up into the things that happen and make you feel like God has forsaken you. See, he made a promise to you. He said, I will never leave you, and I'll never forsake what? you. Hallelujah. He loves you and I, and he promised that. Hallelujah. He's going to be with us till the end of time. Hallelujah. In Hebrews, the 13th chapter, the 5th verse. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said, what? I'll never leave. Yeah. I'll never forsake yeah. you. Matthew 28, 20 says, Lord, I'm with you even until the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Then, he, then he shuts the door in that whole situation. Jesus dropped the mic. Amen. It's finished. It's finished. Jesus dropped the mic. These are his words. Lord, I'm with you 
Always. It's finished. Even to the end of the world. The finished work. The church say. Hey. Drop the mic on that thing. Finish work. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all thought somebody else was the first one to drop the mic. Uh, it was Jesus. Uh, it is finished. Hallelujah. It's See, his promise is nothing that we're able. The, 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 his promise is that nothing will be able to come between us and the love that the Lord God has for us. When I think about where I came from and I think about what I was doing, <laughs> for me to be standing here. That's why I got this silly grin on my face. I, know. I tell people all the time, I am ridiculously happy because of what God has done for me. Yeah, he took all the money away. He said, because money had become your God. That's right. I need you to focus. That's right. And don't right. focus, focus on money. That's right. He said, I'm not going to give you a church building. I still have a church in my house. Oh. He said, because I don't want you to get distracted. Oh. I don't want you to start preaching that message every third Sunday. We got to make the rent. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all laughing, but some preachers are rent. preaching that every third Sunday. Somebody rent. preaching it right now. We got to make the rent. <laughs> we got to make the rent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> By the way, the word it says separate. Nothing can separate. Nothing. It's a very strong word. It declares, Amen. and it carries the idea Amen. of a divorce or dividing That's asunder. Right. That's right. Regardless of what happens, nothing. Nothing. That man can do can come between no. you and the love of Almighty God. Hallelujah. His love, even when we sin against God, Hallelujah. he still loves us Hallelujah. in spite of us. And even when you have enough flesh flare-ups, God is still there. Whoa. Holy Spirit is like, uh, 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 you know you're not supposed to say that. Whoa. You know when you, when you want to say that. <laughs> and God, he's like, Okay, you need to have some shut mouth grace. That's right. Amen? Amen. <laughs> shut mouth grace. Amen. Okay. The Bible says, and I can't remember exactly where it is right now, it says, study to be quiet and do your own work with your own hands. Amen. That means shut up, mind your business, and do what you're supposed to be doing. Do what I'm supposed Stop to worrying about other folks. Do what I'm supposed to be doing. That's Amen. right. Amen. Shut up, mind your business. Mind my business. Do your work. Do my work. With your own hands. Stop worrying about somebody else's Did job. You just take care of it. Stay in your, tell your neighbor, stay in your lane. Stay, stay, stay in your lane. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> True, if God is on our side, and if God be for us. Yeah. Yeah. His love is also enabling. Hallelujah. Verse 37, Paul moves on to tell us that through the things that we are, mm -hmm. more than. More than. More than means you're overwhelming conquerors. More than. God before you, who can be against you? Nothing can be against more you. More than. you more than. Amen? Y'all got to realize the assurance that you have in God. That when you stand and pray for someone, and you lay hands on someone, and you pray for them, by faith, you more than more that than. situation they're going through. God is able, I'm a living witness, that if God can do this right here, Amen. see, she married the crazy guy. Amen. But thanks be unto God who gave her the victory. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love Jesus Christ. Amen. She never knew that one day uh -huh. he was going to be preaching. Oh, he could talk. That's right. I could talk my way in and talk my way out. That's right. All in the same sentence in That's one right. life. That's right. Woo. But God. but God. God had a plan. Amen. Had a plan. See, we're always victorious in and through Jesus Christ because God enables us to persevere until the end. And then his love is everlasting. Paul says in verse 38 and 39 that, hallelujah, he begins to close this chapter by speaking of his confidence in his own security and that God had redeemed him. He tells us what we have. It's not a hope so thing. But it's a confident thing. Oh. Uh, we have an assurance oh. of his everlasting love. Oh. Because Christ protects the believer from the most extreme situations and experiences and forces that will come down the pipe at you. This is what's called the seventh assurance of deliverance. There's nothing in the universe that can separate the believer from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. 
And therefore the believer can be fully persuaded of this glorious fact. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature. Not a thing. If God be for you, ooh, truly God is on your side. My Lord. My Lord. Y'all with me? Amen. Well, I'm getting ready to close in just a few minutes. Y'all pray Give me some. Give me some. Holy God. See, when everything is added up mm. and all these truths are digested, mm. it becomes crystal clear that in Jesus mm -hmm. we have absolute eternal security. I see the believer needs to fear nothing or anything coming between him and God's salvation for your life. See, we must maintain an upright, upright walk. Ah, the Bible tells us that if we will keep that walk going, mm -hmm. no good thing would he withhold from them that walk Lord, Lord, uprightly. Lord, yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, Do we deserve it? But God. but God. So we must maintain that upright walk. But God. Holy See, don't take your relationship with the Lord Jesus for granted. Oh, my Lord. Because even though sin and man and the world cannot separate you from the love of God. My Lord. But let me give you this fact. Mm. Willful, unrepentant sin will separate you from God. Not his love, yeah. but from him. Because if you remember when Jesus was on the cross and he had all of Gary's sin on him mm -hmm. and God was looking down at him and God had to turn away because of my sin. I'll make it personal. Of my sin. And Jesus looked up and said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Now, I understood something at that very moment that God even though he loved Jesus and Jesus was and was him incarnate because of my sin. I'm telling you, I'm making it personal. Because of my sin, God couldn't even look at him. That almost brings tears to your eyes when you think about that fact. That unrepentant sin will separate you from God. It will cause a chasm. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm. But God will still love you. Mm. It will separate you from God. That's what Hebrews 10, 26 to 31 uh -huh. tells us. So I won't, don't get it twisted. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. See, too many people think, well, God would never let me go to hell because whoa. God loved me too much. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, One of the biggest lies I've ever been told. The biggest lie. Hallelujah. I know. I used to quote scripture when I was sinning. And when I got saved, God said, I'm going to take the ability for you to remember scripture away from you. If I wasn't looking at it, I couldn't remember it. But I can remember Hebrews 10, 26 and 31. He said, therefore, if you willfully keep on sinning, once you have the knowledge of the truth, there's no more sacrifice for no sin. More. But a fearful looking forward to of a judgment and a fiery indignation. He said, because on the witness of two or three, on Moses' day, you would have been stoned to death. Gone. Gone. Mm. Gone. <laughs> yeah, that one always wakes people up. When I read it, I got it highlighted, That's right. highlighted, That's right. and underlined. And underlined. That's right. I can't go back. I can't go back. Because no man can serve two masters. But either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold on to the one and despise the other. My Lord. You cannot serve God in man. But you got to be steadfast and unmovable <laughs> because we must maintain an upright walk with the Lord. And when we do that, uh -huh. hallelujah. hallelujah, Romans 8, 37 says, nay, in all things, Ooh. oh, you're walking like a cop. I told you, you got you supernaturally empowered to overcome everything in every situation in your life. Uh, yeah. If God can do this right here, uh -huh. everybody has a shot. Everybody. If God can bring <laughs> me out of darkness. That's right. That's right. That's Put right. me on the road. Put you on the road. Slap the hell out of me. Pop. And then said, now that I got the hell out, I need to put some heaven in. Amen. My Lord. Because you know, once he cleaned the temple, if you don't if you don't put the word in there, it comes back it comes seven back. times stronger. That's right. That's right. 
That's right. You be you wonder why some people act so crazy. Mm -hmm. They ain't putting nothing in there. <laughs> Y'all ain't told them that. Hallelujah. But God, amen. But God. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Yeah. God is truly with us. And therefore, we can say with all assurance of our soul what Romans 5, 8, 6. For God has committed his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hebrews 13 and 6 says, for, so that we, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. And so we end with the same scripture that we begin with. Romans 8, 31. For what shall we say to these things? If God be with us, Ooh, God be for us. My Lord, my Lord. Who can be against us? Amen. Back up off me. I want you to know that you have Hallelujah. all of these assurances Hallelujah. from Almighty God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you have a distinction Thank you, Jesus. because of the spirit Thank life you, Jesus. in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No weapons formed against you no. shall ever prosper. Because God has assured you Hallelujah. you are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are super conquerors. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a hand, praise. Tell God, thank you this morning. Thank God for each one of you. Hallelujah. God bless you.
Helps us to stand. Help us to live the victorious life in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you have done everything that is necessary. Thank you for slapping us with your love. We thank you, Lord God, now that you've made an investment in us. You laid down your life for us. We thank you that we have traded up our dirt for your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are intentional about us. But we are your workmanship, your masterpiece, your handiwork. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you, Jesus, for being our advocate, for being our ancestor. Thank you for defending us. Your wounds are proof that the debt has been paid. Your love has redeemed us. Your love will endure forever. Nothing can separate us from your love. Even when we have flash flare-ups, you have given us grace. You have even given us shut mouth grace. But we're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. So Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, that we maintain an upright walk. We thank you for putting heaven in us. We thank you that your spirit dwells within us. And we thank you that we are super conquerors in Christ Jesus because you love us. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor, for that wonderful word. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> At this time, let us receive our tithes and all. child of God. Amen. And then on the worst day, <laughs> still a child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are blessed. We are blessed.
hear the sweet smell that you have received them into your storehouse. And Lord, that we ask that you pour out a blessing on everyone that is listening to the sound of my voice today. You know what the needs are. Even though we might not vocalize it, you know what they are. And we ask, Lord, that you just bless each and every family that is here today and those that are watching your social media. And it is in Jesus' holy, mighty, matchless name that we pray uh -huh. and give you thanks. Amen. 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 As we're standing, preparing to stand for dismissal. Yes. Keep um, Pastor Minister Joe in your prayers. Amen. Keep Minister Joe in your prayers. Keep Miss Pinkett in your prayers. And I want you to keep, if you first time you heard this, Sister Melanie Bailey in your prayers. Amen. Amen. And I don't know who else, but those are the help. Kim Spencer, her mother, has surgery, so keep her uh, in your prayers as she recovers. Amen? Amen. Now to him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of the Lord with exceeding joy. The Lord, my God, our Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And happy Thanksgiving, safe travels to those of you that may be traveling.